Yes, that is a man painting trees green. And this is a field of stones. Tens of thousands of them attached to rebar that have been planted one by one in the soil. This man is painting these desolate rocks and stones green. But why? What is going on in China here? Why are people taking tens of thousands of individual stones, attaching them to rebar and planting them in the ground in a field? And why are they spraying the rocks green and painting trees green? I'm going to tell you exactly why. So why don't we take a look at some videos together? Here <laughs> we have what looked like some men spraying, well, a mixture of green stuff all over rocks and sort of scrub. Here we see some aunties painting a lawn. Now this is actually legitimate. This is something I'll explain later. There's nothing wrong with this, but spraying these water cannons onto basically scrubland, desolate piles of sand and stones and just on the side of the road, on the side of a, a, a highway like that. Why would you do something like that? Well, I'm going to first get one thing out of the way because there are certainly some of you out there who are going to start bringing up hydro seeding. And I'll explain to everybody what hydro seeding is. You see, hydro seeding is a legitimate process that is used the world over to stabilize and grow lawns. There is, however, a lot of prep involved when it comes to hydro seeding. If there isn't viable topsoil, you actually have to bring the topsoil in and put it down before hydro seeding. If there is topsoil, it needs to be prepared, aerated, all the stones removed. There is a long process and it's very difficult to get the conditions just right for hydro seeding to actually work. In other words, this cannot be hydro seeding because just spraying a hydro seeding mixture on bare rocks and loose sand and desert and whatnot, destroyed scrubs, is not going to actually have any effect other than painting it green. And that's what they want. And that's all they're doing is painting these cliffs and these barren patches of sand and the side of the road, specifically the side of the road. It's very important, that clip, green. And the reason for this, of course, is to fool inspectors. Let's get back to the stones and rocks on rebar first. We're going to watch that clip once more together. And I'm going to tell you what the man is saying. So he's just like, take a look here. You know, we've got stones or rocks on top of um, rebar and so many. He's like, you know, one by one. He's like, what the hell are these for? Eh, loose translation. He says, like, does anybody know? Well, I actually have a little bit more insight in a back and forth of a conversation he had by text. And, well, the answer is so that it can trick aerial photography and basically trick people from a distance to see that it looks like uh, it's healthy agriculture going on in that region. So why is this happening? Why are they painting the side of the roads green? Why are they planting rocks? Well, it all boils down to pollution. You see, China has a massive pollution issue. Not had or in the past or something. Right now. This is Beijing in 2023. This is China in 2023. This is China right now. And I'm not just talking about inadequate waste management and litter and that sort of pollution and, and so on. I'm talking about massive amounts of air pollution, water pollution, environmental pollution. And the reason for this is that China only really started taking this stuff seriously about 10 years ago. You see, before then, factories and industry were allowed to run rampant. And you would have this terrible situation where a factory would be producing some kind of a, a plastic or some chemical process and all the off the sort of runoff from the process would just be dumped into the local rivers, in the local lakes, in the soil and into the air. And well, nobody really did anything. And if anyone came to complain, they would simply be bribed or taken care of or hushed up or whatever the case. But that's because China was in this mad rush to get rich. 
and money was important and more important than anything else. Get the money now, worry about the consequences later. In fact, China still operates that way. But of course, it came to a head when you started to get these cancer villages. And by that, I mean many villages surrounding any sort of industrial site would have this phenomenon where everybody in the village would get cancer. China environmentalists are now seeking evidence to prove industrial pollution as a direct cause of cancer. The move follows the Chinese government's first ever acknowledgement of the existence of cancer villages. Now, cancer is an open secret here, at least for this neighborhood. As we travel through in the last couple of days, the residents here openly told us where to locate the patients. Now, local officials, on the other hand, may not be as open to discussing the issue. Some villagers tell us they actually receive money from some factories to keep quiet. Now, this is a water sample that was taken from this well. This is another sample that was taken from the river nearby. Now, this water sample is considered toxic. It was actually just tested this morning. The local NGO here says on a scale of five, it ranks number five, so it is considered highly hazardous. And uh, the NGO was advising the local villages here to stop using it. And they're saying it's not even suitable for gardening. It's not suitable for watering plants. Needless to say, laundry drinking, cooking, facial wash and shower. So they're telling people not to use it. However, the villagers here tell me that they have no choice but to use it. And that's not normal. You can't explain that away because of fate. No, it was actually the groundwater that was being poisoned in most cases that led to these villages full of cancer victims. Now, of course, this starts to cause a problem because word starts to spread that these local factories are making everybody sick in the villages. And then you had a couple of high profile cases like the well-known television personality who made a documentary called Under the Dome, which because her own daughter was suffering from severe respiratory illness living in Beijing, she did some investigation and found out that all the emission standards on the vehicles and factories and so on were fake and being bribed away and so on and so forth. Of course, her documentary got completely censored and erased and she got disappeared and there was a whole lot of trouble surrounding her and, you know, she got uh, hushed up very quickly. But there was a lot of international pressure and a lot of, well, national pressure because, again, it's the Chinese people that suffer the most under the Chinese government. So because of all this pressure, the government decided that it was really time to start to take green initiatives seriously. And to do so, they started to introduce these ecological requirements for local governments. In other words, they would tell a local city, a local town, a local province, hey, listen, we need you to cut down on your emissions. We need you to ensure that you are doing some environmental renewal uh, programs, things like that. And they put these mandates out there. But of course, it makes no sense to try and reduce your industry when you rely on industry for all the money in your local government, for instance. Why would you shut down factories when that's a big earner for you? Now, you see, China is the land of shortcuts and facades. I mean, the rules are there, but nobody pays attention to them. I mean, take a look at this, for instance. You have a... Uh, uh, a restaurant staff dumping the leftover food and uh, dirty dishes and uh, whatever the chopsticks and used bits and pieces in the river at a tourist site right there uh, in China. And this is a very, very common sort of a situation. The rules are there on paper. You're not supposed to, in Chongqing, which is one of the biggest cities in the world, be digging in the trash for oil to reuse in your restaurant. I mean, this is a very interesting picture because you can see a Gucci in the background there. And here you have a lady wearing a restaurant apron, fishing out used chili oil from the rubbish bins to go and use in a fancy restaurant. 
which you're going to eat at after buying your fancy Gucci bag, I would imagine. And this is not an isolated case. We all know about gutter oil and we know about the fact that this is a big problem all over China. Like I said, the land of shortcuts and facades. If there's money to be made, then why not? Here are how the dirty dishes are cleaned and uh, <laughs> packaged up nicely for your restaurant when you go and sit down, as you can see there. Now, these funny little examples are indicative of how China works. And what happened was, once these mandates were given to the cities and the towns that they have to clean up their act, reduce their pollution, and uh, increase the environmental beautification, well, what did they do? Simple. They just submitted false numbers and false data. So they would say that, oh no, the air quality is good when it was bad. Oh, look at this, the, we've planted so many trees when they hadn't planted any. And they would go as far as to meddle with the air quality measurements so that if somebody tried to check up on them, the central government tried to check up on them, it would actually show that the pollution was lower. They were caught doing things like putting cotton into the sensors. One building is quite famous. They got caught out their bad luck because they were spraying the building, which uh, had all the sensors in it. They were spraying it with water from these big sort of anti-smog machines. So they spray the water all over it to get the particulates down, you see. But because the weather was cold, it froze. And so there was a huge layer of ice all over the building when the inspectors came to check and it gave away their little ploy. Uh, all sorts of funny little uh, stories from around China on how the local governments tried to defeat the inspectors and reach their goals through deception. Now, the thing is, you can only go so far with false numbers and deception. Because if an inspector comes to town, that's when you're screwed. And that's where this painting the stuff green and planting the fake crops, which are actually just stones and rebar come in. Because eventually the inspectors will come. And when they do, they'll see your environmental data is false and your town is in fact an apocalyptic wasteland. So that's why you have to put on a show. You paint the side of the roads green because that's where the car is going to drive with the inspector in it. He's going to look and say, oh, look, the environment must be doing pretty good here because, hey, it looks green. That's why you find these horrible barren patches and paint them green so that when he's driving past in his car or doing an inspection in a nearby village area and looks over there, he doesn't see fallow wasteland. He sees what looks like a lush green field with a nice green hill. That's why you plant these stones so that aerial photographs and satellite photos, and the inspector who's up on a mountain that they take him to a very specific spot, when he looks down, it looks as if the crops are there, and it looks as if everything is thriving. And then he can walk away and say, the local government has met its environmental targets. Tick. Everybody goes, gets drunk on Baijiu, has a big feast, and visits the karaoke afterwards. So it really is that simple. It's all just a big deception to fool the government inspectors into thinking that they're actually doing their job and helping the environment rather than simply wantonly destroying it. There is something very important I would like you to take away from this video. If the local governments in China are trying to fool their own people and their own inspectors, what do you think China as a whole is trying to do to you? I'm quite sure you've been seeing a lot of propaganda coming out about China's green initiatives, how amazing China is, taking over the world in renewable energy and wind farms and solar cells and all that kind of nonsense that you constantly see shoved down your throat. Well, it's, excuse the pun, just a big smoke screen. China has in fact increased its coal burning power plants. Now, sixfold this year is what they're planning. It's absolutely incredible the amount of pollution that China is currently belching out into the world. It's never before been so much. Just a couple of the big state-run companies in China, like two or three big state companies, put out more pollution than entire nations. We're talking about a massive problem here. Don't let people try to explain any of this nonsense away with a per capita argument or, or anything like that, because that just blurs the fact. The fact of the matter is that China right now is polluting the world more than all developed countries combined. It's insane. And this deflection and smoke screen of this, oh, green tech and renewable energy stuff is simply there to stop people from looking into it and seeing the absolute environmental disaster that China is wreaking on the world. 
Anyway, I don't want to be preachy here, but please look into it yourself, and you might be quite shocked to see that planting stones and destroying the world go hand in hand. Until next time, guys, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome. Wait, wait, before you run off, guys, I would like to tell you about my Friday show that I do with my friend Lawai86. It's a live show every Friday all about China. We talk about the news, the propaganda, the crazy fun stuff. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, a lot less serious than my uh, channel over here. So please head on over every Friday to The China Show. Check us out there. We'd really appreciate it. And uh, come and join the fun. Anyway, um, whatever you're doing, stay safe. And see you next time.